Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. If, uh, uh, if you're watching us right now, thank God for it, because God woke you up to see a brand new day. He, 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 listen, he woke you up to see a brand new day. This day is filled with brand new mercies, and we ought to thank God right now that he allowed our eyes to witness another day. He did not have to do it, but he was so good to us that he blessed us to see just one more day. So you ought to just give God praise where you are. Just lift up your voices and just say hallelujah so that we can hear you. Amen. This is Easter Star Baptist Church and uh, we are live with our Sunday morning virtual worship as our pastor would always tell us that you woke up this morning with choice and you decided to uh, join us for our virtual worship. And we just, listen, our, our goal in worship is for uh, the Lord to be lifted, his name to be lifted, because we're firm believers here that when praises go up and when his name is lifted high, there are blessings that come down. Our prayer is this morning, that God has a blessing that has your name all over it. Listen, he inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. So I don't know about y'all this morning, but it is my desire for us to go higher in the Lord on this morning. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of adoration. He is worthy of a hallelujah. So wherever you are, just give God a hallelujah. Give God the highest praise. I declare that when I stand in this place, that God is worthy of all of our praise. We will have our hymn this morning, uh, and we will have our scripture uh, and prayer. My Reverend Randy Martin, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> 
Verses 7 through 11. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolation he has brought to the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and most importantly, the doers of his word. Would you go to the master in prayer with me this morning? Most gracious God, our Father, we'd like to thank you once again, Heavenly Father. Thank you for allowing us to come to your throne of grace, Heavenly Father. Thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for your sanctuary, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your divine protection that you have provided us on this week, oh God. God, I'm so excited to hear the word that you would have for us today, oh God. In my spirit, I feel like it's going to be a mighty one, Heavenly Father. God, I'm asking that you would just rain down on us, Heavenly Father, and allow us to eat your word and your scriptures, oh God. God, I'm asking that you would touch this service, Heavenly Father. I'm asking that you would touch the minister on this morning, Heavenly Father. Touch the music ministry on this morning, oh God. Touch all that are listening, Heavenly Father, that someone, somewhere, will be saved, oh God. Someone, somewhere, Heavenly Father, will find a good word in here today, Heavenly Father, to lift up their head. Because we know you can do it, Heavenly Father. You've done it many, many times before. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you would do it on today. And we are also excited once again to see what you have in store for us, oh God. This and many other blessings we do pray in your darling son, Jesus' name. And we all say it, amen. participating in uh, bringing us virtual uh, worship 
not just on Sundays, but those that are helping to facilitate our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, I mean, God has truly blessed us with some talented people, uh, some talented individuals uh, uh, who are able to assist us in doing the things that bring glory to the name of the Lord. Uh, for his kingdom. This, this is this is this is kingdom building business. This is not about individuals, but it's about kingdom building business. And we're thankful for all of those who play a part uh, in helping us with our virtual service. Got some good news because listen, listen. Somebody told me this a few weeks ago uh, that even when you're not in the building, you can still have church. You can still praise right. God. We're still praising God. Even though he's allowed us to be in, in, in the building, uh, we are actually the sanctuary. So wherever we are, and if we're in him, that's where the sanctuary is. But I got some real good news, and I hope she's watching. Sister Tiffany Carver has been so blessed by the ministry here at Eastern Star that she wants to join. Yeah. Right. I always feel like that one. God is so good. God is so awesomely good. And guess what? If this is Sister Tiffany, if you're watching, we're going to give you the right hand of fellowship, the right hand of welcome. And I also got your phone number right here. Somebody gave it to me. So we're going to give you a call and make it official. But we welcome you. We welcome you to the Eastern Star Missionary Baptist Church family. Give God some praise for that. You ought to just type in the comment section that God is able. You ought to type in the comment section right now that he is able. God is still bringing members. And we're thankful to God. We're thankful to God. And when we get ready to pray, we have two uh, things that uh, we want to live uh, specifically. And also, if you have names that you would like for us to include to the prayer, prayer list, please type that in that uh, comment section that you, that you have. But we have the names of uh, Brother Randy Robinson, and we also have our own uh, Sister Bridget Scott. These are the two names that we want to lift in prayer. And if you have other, other names, other situations, please put those in the comment section. And guess what? We want to give you an opportunity uh, to be a blessing to the ministry, as we always do. Our Givelify app. Thank God for the Givelify app that, that, that affords you an opportunity to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. And we're thankful for that right now. So uh, we're praying. Uh, as some of our members are coming in, uh, they are socially distanced. And we thank God for that. We thank God for them being here. We thank God for taking care of them. And we're, thank, uh, and we're thanking God that he's made this uh, possible for us to do. Amen? Amen. Reverend Randy Martin is going to come back. He's going to bless us with the word to our young people. Amen, amen. So we're going to jump right in this morning. I hopefully, uh, hopefully you already got my nieces and nephews sitting in front of the computer or on your phone so I can talk to them for a little bit. Uh, I was talking to someone this past week and they said something that, that, that pricked me. I wouldn't say in a bad way, but it just sparked my interest and we went down the rabbit hole into a, a conversation about time. A conversation about time. And they told me, well, I got time to do that. And it, it, it put me in the mind state of thinking about the time that we don't have, mm -hmm. the time that we wow. presume that we do have, but I was saying, no man knows the day nor the hour. So we don't have the time that we think that we have. But more so, looking at the, at a, if I can title this on this morning, I would title it, Time is of the Essence. Yeah. But more so looking at it to the fact that we have to stop misappropriating our time. All right. Stop misplacing our time. Time. So I'm hoping that on this morning that I would be able to say something uh, to the to the children and, and, and also to the parents 
on this morning to where we can all come together and do a little bit better with our time. I heard a phrase uh, this past week about tithing, tithing our finances, but also tithing our time. Tying our time to God, taking up our time with our fellow man, because there's no way possible you can say that you love God, but you don't love your fellow man, the person who you see every day. You have to take responsibility for those horizontal relationships as well as your vertical relationship. I mean, you take care of your relationship with God, because God is good, no doubt about that. But you have to take care of your vertical relationship with man. Because that's God's creation. Amen. Amen. Title of it, time is of the essence. There was a time in life where presumably, presumably death was reserved for the older crowd. Y'all say I'm right about that? Yes, sir. But looking around today and lately, we can truly debunk that theory. Death has no age on it. Right. But let's get away from death for a minute. Life, hard times, serious times, times where life becomes cold has no age on it either. Amen? First point, if you're taking notes, we call it the brevity of time. How brief time is. Psalms, the 39th chapter, first, uh, fourth verse through the 13th. The psalmist writes, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. Every day we wake up, we are blessed with 1,440 minutes to be great. To stand upright before God and man. Every day we wake up, the Creator has blessed us with 24 hours that we can divide into three equal parts. Eight hours for the service of God and those who are in distress. And eight hours for our usual vocations, our job. And eight hours for refreshment and sleep. All of those three are important. Of course, service to God and man being the most important. James tells it to us like this in the fourth chapter, 14th verse. Tells our life as a vapor that appeared for only a little time. There's an urgency of time. Time is of the essence. Every day the master allows us to wake up with a fresh 86,400 seconds towards productivity. Now, you can take that time that you have and do something unproductive and end up with the results that you don't want. But the things that you do in life, you have to have an end state in mind. You have to start thinking about the end state. There's a cause and an effect for everything you do. I'm sure everyone has heard that. Now, we all want greatness, but we all aren't willing to believe for the greatness. Amen? Amen. So we have all these seconds and all this time that we can use towards productivity. But first off, we have to kill the spirit of procrastination. Amen? I would tell you, I didn't really understand the point of making my bed in the morning at times military wanted those beds made and they weren't tight. I didn't understand the point of it until I sat on the other side of telling someone to make their bed, right? So what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis to, to become a catalyst, you have to start a catalyst. A catalyst means you have to start something. You have to start with kindling, rather, a small part of the fire, but it's the part of the fire that keeps the fire going, right? Start off with small goals. Get up early, make your bed, because that starts you with a sense of accomplishment, okay? And after you make your bed, fall on your knees if you have the time to start with a prayer, amen? If you can't start with a prayer, pray in stride, amen? 
Pray about wherever you're going that the Holy Spirit will go before you and take care of those seen and unseen dangers before you. Amen? All right. Another thing we have to do, we have to stop letting moments dictate or determine the state of the day. So you had one bad moment. That doesn't mean that you should halt all productivity for that day. You had a bad moment. Don't necessarily say because you got pulled over that you had a bad day. Don't necessarily say that you had a disagreement with a coworker or your parents or what have you that I had a bad day. You had a bad moment. You had a moment maybe of chastisement that was possibly needed. And the Bible says the Lord chases those that he, in whom he loves. Amen? You don't have the time to sit around and stew about things that you're angry about. The Bible tells us, be ye angry, but sin not. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. I checked the time this morning and it says that the sun sets at 7.56. So that means any problem that you're having throughout the day, you got till 7.56 to settle whatever problem that you have with somebody. Don't bottle it up. Go to that man, that woman, or that person and express to them what your problems are with them in a respectful manner, amen? You have to properly dispose of anger before it consumes you, yes. amen? Yes, sir. Next point would be a point of time. I told you you have 86,400 seconds in a day. You have 1440 minutes in a day, 24 hours and 168 hours in a week. So you have to properly, properly, excuse me, properly divide your time up. You have to set your goals according to your time. That's why we have a clock. That's why you have a watch. You have to start early in the morning. Uh, most successful, all, matter of fact, let me back up. All successful people will tell you that they started getting up early in the morning. Amen? Mm -hmm. I was told this once before, and I took it to heart. So you might have a big mouth, but you got one mouth and two ears. That means that you should listen twice as much as you talk. Anybody ever been told that or heard that before? See, time, everything has its time. If you would go with me, if you have your Bibles out, to Ecclesiastes 3. Yes, Let's look at Ecclesiastes 3. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 3 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. If I can pause right there, let's go back up to a time to heal. Amen? There's often times in our life where we meet people, or we may be those people, who like to remain hurt in a situation. We like to remain with a problem so we can lean on our problem. We can say that I was hurt by this, so that's why I'm angry yeah. about this on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis. But the Bible says that you have to allow a time to heal. I heard an example that there was two twins. Two twins, the mother passed and the father raised them. The mother passed and the father raised them. But the father was an alcoholic. And one twin became an alcoholic. And they asked the twin, why? Are you an alcoholic? Why do you believe that you became an alcoholic? He said, because I was raised by an alcoholic. Wow. And in the same breath, they asked the other twin who never touched any form of alcohol, why don't you drink? He said, because I was raised by an alcoholic. Wow. So I can see where I'm going with this. You, you have to get to the point to where you can't blame those outward circumstances no, for you not healing. Because yes, the Bible says yes, clearly, right here, it says clearly to me, there's a time to kill, and then there's a time to heal. Amen? Yes. 
There's a time to break down. There's a time to build up. There's a time to weep. There's a time to laugh. Now, oftentimes, we, we, we find ourselves laughing at things that maybe we should be crying about or crying about those things that sometimes we should just be laughing about. Amen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones. Yes, sir. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent. A time to keep silent. A time to keep silent. Yes. And a time to speak. There's a time to love and then there's a time to hate. There's a time of war and a time of peace. A time for every purpose is what Ecclesiastes teaches us about. God has placed in every one of our lives, in every one of your lives, in everybody's lives and in their heart, God has placed a dream. God has placed a vision, a desire, a hope. Yes. But you just can't stand by and hope that it comes into fruition by happenstance. You have to do those things in which God has told you to do. When Nike say you have to just do it, you have to just get up off your rear end and put those things that God has placed in your heart into action. Yes, sir. See, maybe you don't have all what you think that you have, but that's why we call him a provider. Yeah. That's why we can lean on him and we can be open with God and tell him, I don't have it all together, God. But I know I didn't place this vision, this dream, this hope in my own heart. I know that you placed it there, oh God. And I'm asking that you would give me and provide me with the things that I need to get it done. Amen? Yeah. And if you're torn between two decisions, the worst decision is the one that's not made. The worst decision is someone who just sits around and doesn't make a decision. Amen? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you have to squeeze the trigger. When it comes into your sights. So you have to strike when the iron is hot. Amen. You have to squeeze the trigger. You have to shoot your best shot. Yeah. You have to remain clear on your vision and take the shot. Amen. Yes, sir. See, my fear in life, my fear in life is not death. It's a personal thing I'd like to share with you. My fear in life is not death. My fear in life is not going to hell. I worked that out with the man a long time ago. But my fear is getting to heaven and seeing all those things that God had laid up for me, all those ways and provisions that God had already made for me, but due to allowed distractions, because you can allow distractions in yeah. your life, amen? Yeah. Due to fear, due to laziness, lackadaisicalness, I failed to accomplish great feats and great missions that God had already made provisions before me. And I know you say, well, when you get to heaven, you won't be disappointed about anything. Perhaps some people fear snakes. That's what I fear. Not going to hell, not death. Death comes to us all. But I fear not doing those things that God has, a, has already purposed for me to do in life because of one, distractions, fear, or laziness. That just would be quite embarrassing. I could have had this. I could have done this for this person. I could have provided this for my family. But because I was lazy and didn't get up wow. and do what God told me to do, someone had to suffer. Wow. Amen? Yeah. John, the, uh, John, the ninth chapter in the fourth verse says, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him that sent me. Yes, sir. For the night is coming, but no man can work. For the night is coming. What is the night? This is definitely not talking about just the nighttime when, when the sun goes towards the other side of the, of the earth. No, we're talking about those times when, when things will get a little bit hard for you. Yes, you know, I can't run at 36 like I did at 26. You know what I'm saying? I can't just spring up and Start my day. I got to, and I know y'all a little bit older than me, 
So y'all understand, you know, I, I got to stretch a little bit here and there before I do X, Y, and Z. Amen? Can't just reach down and grab something that weighs a certain amount of pounds because the night is coming in. Amen? As far as it's a long way off, hopefully, but yet it still is coming in. And John, the fourth chapter, the 31st, 34th verse, I hope I'm not boring you all, said, Jesus said to them, my food, my meat, my nourishment is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Not just to start it, but to finish it. I had a, a, I'm rebuilding my home still from the hurricane, and I've done a, a whole bunch of work had two or three guys that helped me along the way. And I had one of those guys, uh, we've been friends since high school, and he came in the other day, and I'm talking about he lit into me. He said, it's not about starting, and it's not the, about the way that it looks as you're going through, it's about how you finish. It's about that finished product, amen? And time, once again, is of the essence. So when my time is done on this earth and tomorrow is not for me, I want to say like Jesus said in John the 17th chapter, the fourth verse, I have glorified thee on earth yeah. and I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. Time is clearly of the essence. And I would ask for you today that, if you, that, that, that you would pray the Lord in strength for you to one start Two, maintain in between. And three, complete. Whatever that is that God has set out for you to complete. Amen? Amen? Because God has some great things that's lined up for you in your life. But first off, you got to start. First off, you have to stand up and you have to step out on his word. Amen? Amen. God has promises from Genesis to Revelation on what he will purpose for you in your life. Amen? And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. I can keep on going. When you get to talking about the promises of God, it's beautiful. Because you know what? When he sent Christ for us, you owe no one else anything on this earth. It, 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 no, anybody know what it feels like to not to owe anyone anything? Not to have. It's like not having a bill collector call you. It's a beautiful thing. Amen. Yeah. Not to owe anybody on this earth because... This earth wants to see you bow down. Amen? Yeah. But when you say, I give it all to he who came to save me, I owe it all to him and nothing to anyone on earth. Now, I, do I go back and say, don't, don't, don't be braggadocious. If you got to brag, brag on God, not yourself. Amen? But understand, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior Jesus and all of these things will be added to. Amen. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to his word. Right. Amen. 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 We're giving God praise. Amen. Again for Reverend Martin. Thank you so much. With that challenge to our young people. It was not just a word of information and inspiration, but it was a challenge, not just to our young people, but to us as well. Thank you so much for the challenge that you issued to all of us. Amen. We, 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 are, we are thankful uh, today that God is in the healing business. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We've had some that were out, some that were sick, but God healed them. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and amen. And we're thankful for a few. Uh, uh, well, actually, we're thankful for all. We're, we're, we're thankful for all that God has done as far as healing. But uh, we have a voice back. Amen. I ain't got to say it. We got a voice back. Voice back in the fold. Got a little Luther in it. Got a little Teddy P in it. Got a little Freddie Jackson in it. Kind of look like Freddie Jackson a little bit. Got a little Pebo Bryson in it. He gonna bless us. <laughs> he gonna bless us this morning where he is. Wherever you decide you wanna bless us from. 
Amen. He's going to bless us with, with a song this morning, and then we'll hear uh, what the Lord has for us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. to do this song. And I know three weeks ago I didn't have the air in my lungs to do right. To hold a note, yeah. let alone sing a song. Yes, sir. Right. But I thank you. I thank him. He's the only one that can, that can pull me through what I went through. Yeah. Right. And I thank you. Blessed place He has 
Amen. Miss you. And uh, we'll continue with it, praying for, for you, for Bridget, for Sister Hope, uh, for Michael, Scotty, and Sam. We're praying for all of y'all. And uh, we miss you. We miss you tremendously. Amen. Amen. Psalm 46. Verse 1 says this to us. God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. Psalms uh, 46, 7 through 11 reads this. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I'm going to read verse 7 again. Read verse 7 again. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. For a few moments, I'd like to talk from this subject He's on my side. All right. All right. He's on my side. Um, uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, each and every one of you for the birthday wishes. Uh, birthday was Wednesday. Uh, and, 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 and as I was able to uh, reflect all this week on, on, on my 29 years of being on this earth, 29 never looked so good, huh? As I was reflecting on 29 years on this earth, it took me back, it took me back uh, to Dallas. Because that's, that's, that's where I was born and raised. I was born and raised in Dallas. So um, uh, I was thinking about this fact that, you know, during the summer months, we didn't have a lot of summer programs to get involved in. It was either all get together walk down the street and go to Big L swimming pool. That's what we call it, the public swimming pool, Big L. We would all go hang out at Big L swimming pool. Uh, but not only did we do that, we would get together uh, uh, er early in the morning. We'd get together and we, uh, we'd play football. We, we'd play football in somebody's yard. And, and, and we would wait until the parents had gone to work. Because a lot of parents didn't want us to play football in their yard. So we would have to wait until, <laughs> and Carol, listen, the statute of limitations is up. So uh, I just want to tell you that's what we did. We waited until you went to work. So uh, uh, I would rush early in the morning, put on my clothes, put my tennis shoes on, and I would and, and, and I would run up the street to Aunt Carolyn's house because that's where we would all meet. And, all, and, and, and if you ever played street football, they would have two captains, one for one team and the other for the other. And, 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 and what they would do is that they would pick teams. It'd be a whole group of us. And the captain, or who was designated to be the captain at that time, would say, I got him. Then I got him. You remember that? Huh? So, 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 so I rushed. I get up, and I was the smallest one of the group. And the captains would start picking. I got him. I got Ron. I got Butro. I got two. And I was always the last one to get picked. It was just like a mercy pick. Like, oh, uh, well. Junior ain't got no team, so come on, Junior, come on, get on my team. So, but but as time went on, I mean, I, I felt bad about that because I was the smallest, and, and 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 by me being the smallest, they didn't think that I would have an impact one way or the other on the game. But as time went on, and I started showing people what I could do, I could catch the ball, I could break tackles, I could score touchdowns. Listen, as time went on. When I put on my clothes to go up 
to where they were to play football, before I got to where I was going, they looked down the street and say, I got him. I want him on my side. Not based on what I couldn't do, but based on what I was able to show them. And the good news of the gospel this morning is that you want to have the Lord on your side because you know what the Lord can do. You know that he's healed your body. You know that he's made a way that nobody else can make. You know that he opened doors that no man can close. You know that he blessed you with the job that you have right now. I don't know about you, but I want God on my side. Hezekiah pins this psalm in the midst of a predicament. He was a man of God who stood firm on the word of God. And whenever you stand firm on the word of God, you wind up speaking truth to power. And see, whenever you speak truth to power, folk are intimidated by the stance that you make and they'll try to shut you up and they'll try to cancel you. They will try to write you off, all because you've spoken truth to power. The king of Assyria had set out to destroy Jerusalem, and the Assyrian army was a mighty military machine. I shared this on one of our Wednesday night segments, but the Lord promised Hezekiah that he was on his side. See, in this life, it's important to have the right people on your side. See, some people are by your side, but they're not necessarily on your side. There's a difference. See, some people are by your side just to spectate and watch stuff go down in your life. But then there are those that are on your side that say, if you in the fight, I'm going to get in the fight with you. If you going, I'm going with you. So God is not just the God who's by your side, but the good news of the gospel is that God is on your side. I got some good news for somebody who's watching. But listen, no matter what circumstances you find yourself in, God is on your side. No matter where you are in your life, God is on your side. No matter what trouble you face in life right now, God is on your side. And as long as he, and listen, and as long as he's on my side, I can make the declaration that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He's on my side. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He's on my side. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So, 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 so listen, the question this morning is, how many of y'all believe that God is on your side? No, no. I want to talk to somebody that's been in some jams before and uh, uh, it's been proven God has shown himself strong, God has shown himself faithful and he's on your side all right, all right. what do we see in the text how do, how, how do I know that God is on my side the first thing I see is the affirmation the affirmation that you look at verse 1 verse 1 starts out by saying God is God is, that is, watch this, the reality, the reality. See, you don't have to worry, listen, listen, God, God, it's, it's Elohim, and Elohim speaks of the sufficiency of God. I may not have everything, I may not have it all, but all I have is all I need. I'm going to slow down and say that again. I may not have it all, but all I have is all I need. And if you got him, that's all you need. If he's on your side, that's all you need. You ain't got to try to figure out how it's going to happen. When he's on your side, he takes care of everything. Elohim, it speaks of his sufficiency. Listen, listen. You don't have to worry about supplies when your father is a supplier. All right, all right. <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, uh, uh. Going back to our text, water was a precious commodity in Palestine and in Jerusalem. So wisely, 
Hezekiah built an underground water system that connected a spring of water with the pool of Siloam. Understand that Jerusalem at the time was under siege. And listen, and just in case the Assyrian army took everything they could see, they will not be able to take what they couldn't see. I'm going to slow down and shout about that one by myself. Because, see, the enemy, see, listen, just in case you didn't know it, you, you have enemies. And sometimes your enemy will try and take what they can see. But what they, see, you can't disturb my peace if it comes from within. Yes, sir. You can't take my joy if it comes within. You can't take what God has given me on the inside because what God has given me on the inside, the Greek definition carries the meaning of, of it's found to be or has been found to be. In other words, it covers past tense. It covers present tense. And it covers a, a future tense. So in other words, when the text says that God is, he's saying that his sufficiency not only is right now, but it has been in the past and it will be in the future. In other words, the psalmist is saying to us without saying it in the text that there is no expiration date to God's isness. There is no expiration date. To the isness of God. Uh, uh, God is, that's the reality. Uh, uh, my refuge and strength, that's the relationship. Woo! Listen, listen. Everything around me may be falling apart, but my relationship with the Father provides for me a refuge. In other words, everything is falling apart. Even though everything is falling apart, I got somewhere to go. <laughs> when circumstances kick me out of where I am, God says, you got somewhere to go. He's my refuge. Watch this. God, listen, 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 listen. Uh, 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 he's my refuge. Now let's understand what a refuge is. A refuge is is a place of safety and security that God provides for his children. Now, God does not protect us just so he can pamper us. God does not, uh, 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 uh. No, let me say it like this. God shelters us, yeah, that's what I want to say, so that he can strengthen us. Uh, uh, he hides us so that he can heal us. That's what the refuge is. God is saying, I brought you to my refuge, and my refuge is not a hospice, but it's a hospital. Because when you go to the hospital, you get a service that eventuates in healing and wholeness. In other words, God says, I'm not sheltering you so that you can die. I'm sheltering you so I can patch you up so that you can get back in the game and fulfill the purpose that I have for your life. Listen. All right. All right. Listen. Uh, uh, let me see if I can make it short enough plain. Uh, 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 God is saying to somebody who's watching virtual service today, I didn't bring you this far for you to quit. I didn't bring you this far for you to die. I brought you here so that I can heal you. I brought you here so that you can get back out there and go harder than you ever been before. God says, what I want to do is, I want to give you strength that enables you to complete the journey that I have. This book, okay. Uh, 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 since y'all not feeling it that way, uh, I kind of figured that. So uh, uh, I got an illustration. I got an illustration. I, uh, I'm a, yeah, it was uh, Deontay's last season 
at Alabama. And uh, this particular game, I wasn't able to go, go to the game. Uh, Pam went to the game, so I had to watch the game on TV. And uh, this, this, this game, I, I think if memory serves me right, they were playing a team called the Citadel. They were playing the Citadel. And uh, late in the fourth quarter, because it was tight uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the first half, but in the second half, uh, they kind of started pulling away. So in the second half, Deontay had gotten injured. He got gotten injured, and they took him out of the game. Now, I was not able uh, to see where they took him because I wasn't at the game. I was watching it on TV. But here's what happens. Alabama has on its sideline uh, a medical pop-up team. And whenever a player gets injured, they pop up the tent and they put the play, they, they, they place the injured player in the tent. And they put the injured player in the tent for two reasons. Number one, so that people could not see the work they were doing on the player as to speculate to what the player's injury was. And number two, so that the opposition would not be able to make decisions that would impact the game blame, uh, based on the player that was injured. He was in the tent. <clears throat> They were administering uh, a, a medical attention to his injury. And I got a phone call saying that, don't worry, everything is all right. I could not see what they had done, but I had gotten a call of confirmation that everything was all right. I did not, I saw the injury, but I did not see him go in the tent. In other words, he was hid while they were administering medical attention. Lord have mercy. My brothers and my sisters, all I'm trying to say is that there is some work that God is doing on me that he does not want you to see until he's finished. Lord have mercy. I think I'm going to slow down and say that one again. God is working on me right now. And God says, I don't want you to see what I'm doing until I'm finished. Listen,
number two, and I promise you, I'm almost done. We see the affirmation. God is. But then, in verses 7 uh, through 9, we see the assurance. Listen, when you know who's on your side, you're able to square your shoulders. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> when you know who's on your side, you learn how to stick your chest out. When you know he's on your side, you know how to hold your head up high. Listen, the psalmist is now saying to us, I don't just want you to take my word for it. I don't just want y'all to take my word for what God can do. But I want you to see it for yourself. The, listen, the text says, and the psalmist says, come see. <laughs> come see. Uh, uh, I, listen, I, uh, when I, it, was, it was not to when uh, I got to Southeast Texas that I, that I come to understand what come see me. <laughs> Anybody ever said that to you? Come see. Like, come see what? I, you know, when, I mean, when we were back in Dallas, we used to say, come here. I know what that means. But y'all would say, and I say y'all because all y'all from Southeast Texas, y'all say, come see. And when you come see, it's the equivalent to come here. So when I come see, as I learned, you got something that you want to show me. Right? Okay, so now I want y'all to come see what this text <laughs> is saying to us. Listen, the psalmist is now saying, I want you to see what God has done. In other words, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a blessing in your life that's worth showing somebody? Lord, have mercy. I'm about to jump up and down I got some blessings in my life that are worth you seeing. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to come see what God is able to do. Listen, I mean, listen, you ain't bragging. You ain't bragging. But the last time people saw you, you were on your deathbed. <laughs> the last time folks saw you, you were supposed to be counted out. But the text says, I want you to see how God has turned my situation around. How many of y'all know that God will turn it around? I'm talking to somebody who was sick. I'm talking to somebody who was in trouble. I'm talking to somebody who couldn't find their way. God was able to turn your situation. He was able to turn it around. But I'm rushing to a close. I'm rushing to a close. We have the assurance. We have the, uh, well, first of all, we have the affirmation. And the affirmation is that God is. But not only do we have the, uh, the, the affirmation, we have the assurance that we can tell somebody, come see what God has done in my life. In other words, I got something to show you. Uh, listen, listen, I, 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 don't, I don't want you to just hear me say God is good. I don't just want you to hear me say that he's an able God, but I want you to see what God has done in my life because I once was down. <laughs> I once was broken, but look at me now. Lord have mercy. God is so good that God is able to turn your situation all the way around. We see the assurance, but then we see the activity. The activity. What am I supposed to do? When I'm in trouble, when God is on my side, what am I supposed to do when folk are trying to hurt me, when folk are talking about me, when folk are dogging me out, when I'm kicked to the curb? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to fight back? Am I supposed to, 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 to get in your face? and tell you about yourself, what am I supposed to do? The text give us the activity that we ought to be involved in. The text says, be still. Lord have mercy. Can I say it again? Be still. 
Let me tell you what be still means. Listen, be still in the text means to take your hands off and to free yourself up from responsibility. It means to take your hands off the situation. No, no. In other words, it's just like uh, 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 if, uh, if you're getting ready to hit somebody that hits you back, be still means that even though you got your fist balled up, you got your hand cocked back and ready to follow through with the left and the right, be still means to unclench your fist. Drop your hands. And rely on a God to fight your battles. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Have you ever? And I listen. I, I listen. I'll be about to get somebody with this one. Have you ever been on social media and wanted to clap back at somebody for some stuff that struck your last nerve? You started typing, and all of a sudden, you let go. You deleted yes, what you were typing. Yes, or maybe just this week, one of your friends texted you something that you didn't like. And you thought about it for a minute, hold up. I know she didn't. <laughs> and you got on that and you, you start, be still means to delete it, drop it, and let the Lord I hate your battles. Listen, here's what I've come to understand. Here's what I've come to understand. Uh, uh, you know, because I've been through some stuff where I wanted to clap back. I was the one who was doing the typing and had it deleted. See, I can tell y'all because I was, listen, it was once me. L listen, one of the worst things you can do is mess with somebody's cheering. And boy, I wanted to get the typing and just said, let it go. The Lord said, take your hands off of it. Because here's what I've come to understand. Your inactivity is your best activity. Right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, yes. Your inactivity is your best activity. Check this out. God does not expect you to fight. But he, ex but listen, he wants you to show up for the fight. Yes, sir. All right, all right, all right. Man, I'm about to shout all by myself. God says, I don't want you to fight. Remember, I'm on your side. But I, all I want you to do is show up and watch me fight. All right, <laughs> show up. And watch me handle your haters. Show up and watch me make your enemies your footstool. Show up and see the glory of the Lord that I'm going to show you on this day. Because here's what the enemy don't I mean, the enemy does not understand. The enemy pursues you because they believe that you're the only one they have to deal with. What they don't know is that you got somebody who's on your side. In my activity, when, I, when I'm still and I allow him to fight my battles, here's what I've come to understand. That when the battle is over, I'm able to praise him. Because I already know what he's capable of. But now, check this out. I don't even wait until the battle is over no more. You know why I don't wait until the battle is over no more? Because I've had battles in my life. Over these 29 years, I've fought some battles. I've been through some dark places. I've been in some rough patches. And I've seen God make a way every single time. 
I've seen God deliver me out of each one of them. So even before I get to the battle, I'm shouting all the way to the battle because I already know what God is going to do. I already know that I'm going to come out on the winning side. I already know what God is capable of doing. So even in the midst of my circumstances, I know how to give God praise. I don't have the victory yet, but I know victory is on the way. I don't have But not only do I praise God in advance, but I learn how to praise God anywhere. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know if y'all remember a few weeks ago, maybe about a month or so ago, I was doing Bible study. I couldn't make it to the church, so I had to do Bible study in the car. So if y'all watching Bible study every week tonight, I was actually in my car at a baseball game. So I was at the car, in, in, you know, at a baseball game. I said, well, I, well, I got to set all my stuff up and I got to do FaceTime. See, even though I, listen, even though I could see myself in my phone, I couldn't see y'all. But uh, even though I wasn't in the sanctuary, I was in the sanctuary in the car. So uh, 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 I was giving God praise. If y'all remember that one, I mean, that was a good one right there. We were shouting. We were giving God praise. I was sweating. And people were walking by the car like, what's wrong with him? Something wrong with that dude. Is he talking to himself? I mean, it may have looked crazy to them. But I was having a praise party right there where I was. Because I was thinking about the goodness of God. And when you think about the goodness of God, guess what you don't need? You don't need a crowd. You don't need an audience. People may look at you funny. They may think you crazy. They may think you lost it. I'm at a baseball game giving God praise because God is not just limited to the sanctuary. I learned how to take my praise with me. So if I'm in a grocery store, Come to him 
You don't have to try to fix anything. You don't have to straighten yourself out. All you have to do is, is, is accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. He'll change you. He'll make your life brand new. He'll connect you with your purpose. He'll turn your life around. If you need a Savior, his name is Jesus. And we offer him to you. This call is twofold. Those that desire prayer. Those that heard the word today and they are honest in admitting that this word was for them. That they, that they tried things on their own. They, they, they tried to, to guide their life, to maneuver through life to navigate through crisis situations without God. You know what God can do. You know his ability. But yet, you don't believe enough for him to do what he says. Our prayer is for you. Our prayer is for those that have lost loved ones, those that have lost their way, those that are dealing with confusion, those that are wrestling with the enemy within. How many of you know that sometimes the enemy that we have to deal with is not around us? but it's in us. How many of you need the Lord to get you out of your own way? For you to stop blocking your own blessings? If that's you, we want to close in prayer with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, again, we come. We thank you for your word. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Your word has the ability to change us, has the ability to revive us, renew us, to give us that strength when our spiritual batteries run low. Lord, we declare that we need it right now. In the name of Jesus, fill us up where, where we're all, all, almost all empty. Give us that strength keep us keeping on. When we feel like giving up, help us to get up. Get back in the game. Help us to know that you are on our side and you will help us get through what we're going through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God, thank God. Listen, we thank God. Uh, oh, Sister Joyce could not be with us today. We're praying for her and her uh, mother right now. We're praying for them. Brother Jalen holding it down out there. Good to see you, Brother Jalen. Amen. Again, we thank God for all of our leaders. We thank God for all of our leaders, uh, our chair for deacons, our deaconess. We thank you so much for uh, helping us and aiding us and doing the things that we need to do. Again, our dynamic duo. Amen. The Wonder Twins of videography. <laughs> Sister Hayden Jackson and Sister Vontre Crache. Amen. Amen. We got the posse back with us. Again. Brother Ricky. Brother Ann. Brother TK. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. And we almost have our praise ticking back. We're praying. We're praying that God will allow them to be at full strength real soon. I don't know about y'all. Like I said, I'm, I'm praying. I, listen, I'm expecting God to get us back together again. I believe that he will. I just believe that the day is coming where God is going to bless us to get back together again. We thank God for all of our members who have joined us. And don't worry, there's social distance. 
They're masked up, and we thank God for that. Brother, Reverend Brother Randy, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. One of these days, and I grow up, but I'm 30 next year. My prayer is that I can be as cool as you. Thank you so much <laughs> for your word. Let's stand. We're going to be dismissed. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be honor, honor and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. And all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Again, God bless you. Thank you for joining us uh, for our uh, virtual Sunday morning worship here at Eastern Star. We look forward. God says the same. Seeing you again on next Sunday. God bless your hearts. Until next Sunday, take care. Have a great Sunday.